Okay, welcome back guys. In this video I'm going to create one more electricity system because we've got our solar panels but it might just not be enough for our game so I'm going to create a wind turbine system as well. Uh, from the previous video I've textured out our battery cell. It's got I've got a self illumin material here to emit light. I've got a point light that just emits light on the ground, ignores everything else and uh, I've also got some vents that emit a very small particle effect so pretty simple things really things I didn't really want to do in the video um, and as you can see these tight these uh, d vents have the tile filter in Photoshop again it's coming in really handy actually the, the tile filter in Photoshop it's just a really easy way to make a grid pattern I've used it for the vents and I've also used it for the uh, the solar panels as well so that's really easy to do and I've uh, I've also used another filter called crystallize and a crystallize kind of erodes the sides of uh of a color in the image so it's a really nice way to add erosion to your objects okay guys um I think that's all I wanted to mention there so I'm going to jump into Maya and so I've already created a wind turbine I done it in a few videos ago in our mountain range project so if you guys have been following along with the first person shooter stuff you'll know how to do this I'll put a link in the video so you, you can jump to the wind turbine modeling video tutorial but I want to add a few more things I want to add a ladder that goes up to the top of the turbine and I want to create a little platform at the top and you might wonder well a ladder has loads of steps and it might you know limit our polygons in the game it, this might take up a lot of polygons basically and we're not going to do it that way we're going to use a texture map so we can draw the ladders we can draw the whole ladder and the platform using a texture map and then we can add as much detail as we want okay so instead of using a plane so we can use a 2D object I'm not going to use a plane in Maya because by default in Maya a plane is just one sided so the ladder will appear this side but if we turn around to the other side of the plane the ladder will not be there will be invisible so to deal with this issue you could create a two sided um, shader in Unity but I'm not going to do that I'm just going to make this do something a lot simpler I'm just going to get a cube and then get my vertex tool and then merge the vertices and then merge the vertices and then our cube will turn into a 2D object but the two faces either sides will maintain so we can then draw uh, textures on both sides of the plane alright guys simple as that it's a very simple solution let's just move it in place to start with our ladder is a bit thick I'm just going to make it a bit thinner let's just drag it down a bit we need some space for, whoops, we need some space for our platform so I'm just going to go to a vertex bring it down maybe that's okay go to an object again let's just make it a bit thinner okay so straight away I'm going to go into I'm going to assign an existing material actually because I've been testing this out and this is my material if I go to edit UVs UV texture editor this is what it looks like so I've used that awesome I've used that awesome tile effect, that tile filter in Photoshop to do this again, really simple. And all you need to do, guys, is select both the faces, either end. So I've just dragged to select both the faces. I'm going to go into a, uh, a side view so we can frame up on our ladder. And I'm going to create UVs based on the camera. Now both UVs are flat and conform to the same UVs on both sides. So I'm going to just make this the camera, uh, sorry, the ladder shape. And I'm just going to move it into place so it just needs to be a bit thicker to get the sides of the ladder and that would do so as you can see the ladder's there but the steps took too far apart all we need to do is just increase the scale in the this direction and it will repeat itself and we can have as many steps as we like okay but let's just have a look I think that'd be alright that's about right let's just double check what we've done yep that's pretty cool that's our ladder okay so to create the platform itself using this grid thing I'm going to duplicate this object let's just uh, make this a bit smaller actually and my laptop's not very good resolution wise alright let's just rotate this 90 in the in the Z I'm just gonna shrink it down let's just shrink this right down here let's do it again bring it up make it a bit longer so alright that's cool so that's our platform and I'm just gonna again get to go to a face mode select both the faces on either side ah let's just double check things so we can see the ladder from this side turn it around yep I can see the ladder from that side as well okay alright let's go back into our UV texture editor 
And this time I'm going to get the UVs based on the top view, create UVs based on the camera. Go back to a perspective, and here they are. So let's just split them for now. Let's just let's just um, shrink them down. So I'll, I've left a little gap here, so I user can climb up into the uh, into the platform. So I'm just going to rotate, and that seems to be the right way. Okay, let's just go to a UV mode. <clears throat> Sorry, guys, make this a bit longer, and make this a bit thicker. Make this one a bit thicker as well. Okay, and that's our platform. I think the squares are a bit stretched, so if we shrink this down, it will hopefully proportionalize the squares. That's cool. So, a really cool way of um, creating like lots of detail in your 3D models without having to create lots of polys. Okay, that's pretty cool actually. Let's just uh, bring it down a tad. So I want to create two more objects actually, I'm going to duplicate this again and I'm going to rotate it zero again I think in the uh, in the Z and I want to rotate it, I think it's 90 in the Y, yeah that's the one. So I'm going to, actually I'm going to rotate it 90 in the X as well, okay. Let's move it into place, so I'm going to go into a top view actually to do this, a bit easier. Working with 2D objects, it's easier to do it in your top view. Okay, bring it up, and again, let's go to a face. Let's just grab these. Grab these. I'm going to make this a bit shorter actually. Go to a vertex mode and just bring them down. Okay, so again, face, select both of the sides, drag to select both of the faces split them and now we all we need to do is kind of make them proportional so I'm gonna take this out of the way and that's pretty good actually it's pretty proportional they're joining and uh, I'm pretty happy with that actually let's just okay that's and that's about right I think that's cool so now we've got a barrier at the top and at the bottom that's cool and that works out pretty well again we can see it this side and we can see it this side as well Okay guys, really really nice trick in Maya. Alright, duplicate, bring it across. Okay, now we bring it across. We need to create one more object, so this one might be a bit more tricky actually. And let's just rotate it, 90 in the Y. Maybe not, 0 in the Y. And to do this I'm going to go to a side view. Let's just line it up to start with, and be just going to a vertex actually, and line it up, and we can line it up here, let's just do that. So we've got the same problem, we need to make the squares proportional to the rest of the uh, object, so am I selecting the whole object there, I don't know, let's go to an object just to be sure, and again I'm going to go into a top view, and just to line things up, make sure everything's nice. And it's working out pretty well. So, okay, this is not proportional because if we check the ground to the thing, this object, the squares are not square basically, they're rectangular. So let's just go into f this mode again. I think we can just shrink it down. Let's see if this will work. So it's kind of working. Let's just move them across. Okay, let's just play with this for a sec. So. And again, that's worked out pretty well because there's a border at the top because we haven't moved the UVs very much. And, well, you could argue there's a bit of an issue there, but who cares at the end of the day? The user will not see it. So let's, okay, let's go into a UV. And I just want to make this a bit smaller, a bit lower. And to do that, bring it down a tiny, tiny bit. And that's cool. Awesome, that's really awesome, actually. So we've got our platform now. Okay, let's just duplicate this one more time and bring it across. Go to a top view and... Okay, that's awesome. Okay, let's save this out before I make any mistakes. And that's what we do, guys. We've basically just created a plane and we've added detail to the plane and we can see it on either direction of the model. Okay, that's awesome. What I'm going to do now, let's just merge these all together combine these all together in one object. Let's see if we can do that actually, mesh combine. And 
actually worked out really well. The UVs have stayed the way they are. Let's just go to Edit UVs, UV Texture Editor. Okay, so just a side note, if you combine all these together, the UVs will overlap. So if you want to edit this in the future, it might be a bit of a pain. You might want to have two versions, one with combined, one without combined. But, you know, side note. But because they all use the same, the same texture, they'll conform to the same image. They won't change. Okay, guys, so simple as that. All right, let's just grab all this stuff. Let's go to File, Export, Selection. I'm going to import it into my Unity project, see how it looks. Web Games, Assets, Models, OK, Turbine. Let's see, let's have a look. We want the geometry. We don't want any animation. That's cool. Let's export. Let's go hop back into Unity. OK, so in our Models folder, we can drag on the Turbine. It's really small. I'm going to go to Turbine, change the scale factor to 1 apply that and it's still really small okay that's cool let's just drag it up let's see how things look okay that's good actually it's worked out pretty well so our platform is showing in both directions and our turbine at the moment is just white so and for some reason it's using the self illumin but we can easily change this let's go to material create let's just call this white paint or something for the wind turbine make it kind of a grey and it's just a diffuse that's awesome for now let's just drag it onto each one of the objects and I think we're done here so it just adds a bit more detail to our game let's just save this out I keep, I keep thinking we're in Maya so I'm not very good at the old controls for now but okay that's cool and as you can see the turbine is a bit wonky so I'm going to grab this object grab the actual platform object and remove it a tiny bit and that's our turbine guys so I might add a bit more detail in the next video to this but it's turned out pretty well actually and if you wanted to make this a bit thicker you can just hop into Photoshop and just change the lines to make them a bit thicker and stuff okay so that's what I wanted to cover in this video we've got our platform out of the way so that's it guys, thanks for watching the video, hopefully see you in the next video, thanks a lot.